Hey everyone, Bob here. Today, I would like to give you the continuation of the information regarding the transport fleet management monitoring system. So this is the continuation of the previous video that I have presented to you earlier. And I have discussed about the job entry form, this one. Okay. Together with the report of the uh, repair and maintenance data or history, which includes all this information and all the uh, information about the labor cost, okay, the work that had been done on the unit and the, uh, the parts used or installed on the unit, okay? I think this one is not, okay, I'm gonna change the uh, format for this, make it, uh, with the dollar sign, currency. Okay, then we look at the dollar here. We click OK, OK. So the, the cost of the uh, parts, spare parts, or, or the materials that being used, okay? And the total cost, which means labor cost plus parts materials cost is total cost, okay? So I remember I have said that the the engine oil, if you're going to use, okay, if you're going to use a regular or conventional type of oil, it would be under PM1, right? Remember that PM1. But uh, for for uh, for the engine oil, uh, full synthetic type of oil, you're gonna ha you're gonna you you're gonna put it under PM2. Remember that, okay? So let's look look at the PM intervals, which I have you know explained them to you earlier in my previous video. Okay, if you are gonna if you're gonna use a if you're gonna change the oil using a conventional type of oil, then it would be under PM one, which is every five thousand kilometers. But if you decide that you're gonna use a, a more expensive one, which is a full synthetic oil. It would be under PM2 or every 10,000 kilometers. So the one that we have decided to put under PM2 is the, okay, I have, actually I have already changed this, but in previous, my previous video, I have indicated her PM1, which is wrong. So I've already changed that because I've decided that the oil that I'm gonna use is the full synthetic one, 20W40. Okay, so, in this video, I'm gonna explain to you the the fuel consumption control or the fuel economy here under the entry form. Then also it's going to be automatically indicated here or re recorded here in this fleet operation fuel economy worksheet. Okay, but but first thing first, I would like to you know like to explain to you how you're gonna analyze the reason, the, the, the main uh, you know, reason why we're having this history is because this would be your reference when you are, you know, when you are uh, planning for the budget for the following year budget. So this would be history and you don't want to start doing the budget planning by, you know, by uh, adopting the, um, what you call the zero-based budget planning. You want to base your budget planning based on this on the history from the previous year, which is you know this is twenty twenty two, this is twenty twenty two uh, record. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna prepare the budget for the for the following year, which is twenty twenty three. So what you do is you're gonna analyze. This is not very long information, okay. I don't want to spend more time uh, putting some information here. I've just added a few lines, okay, for me to be able to do the analysis. So this would be the total cost would be your, you know, if you have a complete information or history, the complete 20, 22 year history, then you'll know, you know. So, but what's also important here is that you have to analyze, okay, which among the unit is spending more money in terms of the labor, okay? 
when when uh, one unit is spending more money uh, in uh, in terms of labor costs, it's because of the frequent uh, breakdown. If the unit is uh, breaking down frequently or more often, then of course the the labor cost will be more uh, costly. Okay, because every time you you do a certain uh, work on the unit, the the labor cost will add up. Okay, the more frequent it is, the more labor cost it will incur be incurred by the by the unit okay so this would this would then be your uh, you know your information okay this will prompt you to decide whether you want to dispose the unit because it's, you know the unit is beyond repair or always breaking down and the downtime factor is too high Okay, and utilization factor is very low. Okay, like for example, if the unit for a month, unit has been utilized for five days and the rest of the days of the month is down. It could be a uh, lack of uh, the availability of a problem in terms of the availability of the spare parts. Uh, maybe the, the unit is already outdated and uh, you have problems finding the uh, replacement for the spare parts that's breaking okay and maybe the the unit is already very old okay it's beyond the uh, scheduled uh, you know scheduled uh, useful life of the unit okay so you want to replace them you want to expose and you want to Get, get another a, a new one replace a new unit so how are you going to decide uh, in doing that you decide because of the cost analysis and one good tool you can use you know analysis anal analysis tools that you can use analytical tools is the uh, table the what you call the uh, pivot table if you are new to this pivot table, first time that you're going to use this, don't worry. This is not so, you know, not so difficult to use. It's not so complex because this is a user-friendly uh, tool. Okay. Okay. We're going to put the analysis of the table here in the existing worksheet right here. And the location will be right here. And then, okay, that would be in the same in the in the, the existing worksheet, and the location would be here in B, B, B three, okay, the cell location. Just click OK, okay, and then you have a pivot table fields, okay. The pivot table fields is the all the information, all the he headers here, the work description, the unit price. The uh, parts, material costs, everything else are here. So the thing that we're gonna analyze is the cost. So we're gonna find the total cost. Just drag, you know, click this and drag it over here in the in the box value box right here. Okay, as you can see, it's already indicated here. Then what are the things that you want to include? You want to include, the, of course, the fleet number because you want to analyze the fleet, put it in, in the rows box, okay? You see right away the information, okay? So here, it's a big list, okay? And difficult to analyze, but if you're gonna use the uh, pivot table fields, uh, pivot table uh, analysis, it's easy. See, you, you get the, you get the uh, unit number, and the corresponding cost, the total cost. You can also analyze in terms of the, uh, in terms of the uh, labor cost only, or in terms of the, okay. Uh, all you have to do is just remove this. If you want to remove that, then you you get the uh, labor cost. This one put it here. So that would this would be your labor cost, okay? Sum of labor cost for every unit that 
you know, that you want to analyze, right? So, okay, we get this back here. Then we put back the uh, total cost, this one to the values. What else do you want to analyze? You want to analyze the, um, you know, the driver or rather the mechanic. Okay, mechanic. Mechanic is right here. Okay, I'm going to put it here below the fleet number. So you already have the mechanic. For example, the uh, fleet number TT is 01. Uh, Jim Green uh, done on this. This is the cost. John Smith. Okay, TT2 is Greg Black, Mark Delaney. Okay, you can also do that. Okay, or you can put the mechanic here on the filters. Okay, here's the filters. Okay, right now mechanic is all, okay. We're gonna filter it, we're gonna find, let's say for example, Greg Black, click okay. So under Greg Black, he has done a work on uh, fleet numbers, TT02, TT10, and TT12. So the total cost is 610, okay can also do that. Uh, if you want to add more here on the rows, let's say you want to include, what else you want to include? Let's say, uh, okay, the job type, you can put the job type here, which is preventive, preventive, they're all preventive, okay, let's, uh, click all. Okay. They're all preventive and corrective. Okay. Okay. What you want is if you want to analyze the job type over the fleet number, we can just interchange it. Okay. So under the corrective, the total is uh, $5,657. So these are the corresponding costs for every unit, right? And if you see in our records, there are more corrective. Oh, corrective is like breakdown repair and scheduled maintenance. Preventive is the scheduled one. Okay. The total is like the corrective is 5,657, and the preventive is $1,057. And the total, uh, grand total is 6,715. So by looking at this, you'll be able to see which one is, you know, giving more trouble. Okay. As you can see, corrective maintenance, breakdown repair is more on uh, TT06, 1000. Uh, okay. 1000. So, okay. By looking at this, you can also analyze. Okay. Just, you know, just try to... Analyze by, okay, what about work description? Let me see, I, I'm gonna put it in column. So here in the job description, you can actually, uh, del uh, you know, uh, hide this by clicking the X here. Okay, so you can see, okay, what are the, uh, you know, what are the kind of work that you have done on the unit and this corresponding cost, okay? Like this one, uh, overhaul water pump. Okay, overhaul water pump. That's the total corrective action. And, and uh, you know, the TT03. Okay, $114. Okay, same thing with the uh, TT13. So, you know what I mean? It's easy to, you know, if you want to show again the the just right click here and then show field list okay then it will come come back okay you can also put it here in the rows okay see see these are the things that you want to analyze okay in terms of the uh, work description okay and the corresponding cost okay okay let's show again the uh Build this. All right. So you can, you know, you can play. You can play this out, you know.
What are the materials that were used? Okay, you can also include the materials. Okay. All right. It shows here that you have, uh, you know, you have installed new brake caliper, brake uh, brake disc rotor also. Okay, and which unit are you know, TT zero two, you know, uh, you have done a brake caliper replacement on TT zero two. You have done replacement on torque rod for TT-07. You can, you know, I don't want to prolong, prolong this uh, information. You can, you know, you can do it yourself. You can do some practice and then you just play it, put, uh, put some information here, another information in the rows, etc. So it's an easy thing to do. Okay. So let's now uh, move to another topic, which is the fuel economy. Let's go back to fleet tracker. This is the fuel economy. Okay. So everything we, just like the uh, work history, everything that we have recorded here will automatically go to report sheet, this one, fleet operation fuel economy, and let's go back to data entry. Okay, let's start, uh, you know, uh, let's start doing, uh, you know, some, uh, putting in some information here, some sample data, okay? So what's, what's the problem of a fleet having, uh, you know, consume? more fuel, okay? As we, I am presenting to you a tractor and trailer, and all these are diesel, no? This is not, uh, they're not using gasoline, but rather the, the units are using diesel fuel, okay? What is the reason why the, the uh, a specific unit, for example, TT-01, is using more diesel fuel, consuming more diesel fuel? There are lots of reasons why, why there is an excessive, you know, uh, consumption of fuel diesel. It could be, uh, you know, driving habits. The, the driver has not been trained, has not been assessed properly by a driving instructor. Uh, when you're talking about tractor trailer, you're talking about long haul trips, okay, long distance trip. So we're talking about 500 kilometers distance back and forth, talking about 1,000 kilometers distance uh, long haul trip back and forth, 2,000 kilometers, could be 2,000 kilometers, you know, uh, coast to coast from west to east, east to west, maybe around 5,000 kilometers back and forth, going back to the headquarters, your 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 uh, vehicle would run about ten thousand kilometers uh, back and forth. So you need a reliable driver, a driver who is uh, well trained and has been assessed, you know, properly assessed by the by the driving instructor, and is good in you know in terms of driving skills. Is really good. So. So one factor is driving habits, okay? So that's why uh, it's also important that you implement a long haul driving assessment. It could be done uh, initially when a driver jo is joining your company, or it could be done on a regular basis, like uh, an annual driving assessment to determine, okay, the, the driving habits that have been developed by the long haul driver or the trailer driver. You know, another factor is the vehicle maintenance. Okay, is it the is the uh, unit properly maintained? The pair parts are properly replaced when it's uh, breaking. Also, another factor is the road condition. Okay, that will also affect uh, fuel economy. Okay, terrain, and and also even the condition of tires, the tire inflation, either with either whether the tire is overinflated or the tire is underinflated. So you have to be on the standard always, okay? And you can you can actually look at the, uh, the proper inflation pressure uh, by looking at the operation manual, manual, or, you know, the, the uh, workshop or the motor pool will give you that information. Uh, whether it's also the overloading of the vehicle also consume more fuel, so you have to look at your loads. You 
don't make sure that you do not overload your vehicle. The ambient temperature will also affect your uh, your uh, fuel consumption or fuel economy. Okay, the traffic condition. Okay, the slope of road or the displacement. How many pistons? Is it a, a V8 engine, V6 engine? You know, and horsepower of the engine, or or the age of the the engine or the the unit itself. Uh, how old is the truck? Okay, this will uh, will affect definitely affect the uh, oil consumption. That's why you have to you know the fuel is the one of the biggest uh, share in the total cost in operating a truck or a, an articulated vehicle. So, what is the fuel economy? It could be three to six kilometer per liter economy. It could be three to four kilometer per liter consumption. You know, every every liter, one liter will run about three to four kilometers like that. Or maybe it could be four to seven kilometers or it could be five to 12 kilometers per liter. Okay. Uh, it could be uh, 20 kilometers, 13 kilometers, eight kilometers, seven kilometers. So depending on the uh, on the conditions uh, or the factors that I have just explained to you, okay? So what you do is based on your history, which is going to be here in this report, you're going to analyze your fuel consumption in order for you to be able to, you know, to properly uh, budget, you know, properly plan your budget for the following year for your, you know, for your, uh, for your uh, operation of the, uh, let's say, for example, if the, if the units are, are part of the uh, distribution logistics operation or the supply chain operation, then you have to be, you know, on the dot in terms of your budget planning and you should be realistic in your uh, budget planning, okay? So let's start doing this. Say very important in, in the transport fleet uh, operation management is the cost. That's why just like the repair and maintenance history, we're also gonna, you know, monitor the fuel consumption of every unit that we have in the fleet, uh, fleet complement, okay? Okay, we where I'm gonna I'm gonna be giving example here like, okay, let's start again with DT zero one, okay, then whether it's active or inactive, so we're gonna put active here. So let's say the date is one one. Oh, this is this is uh, New Year, twenty three, okay. How much is the how much is the price per liter? Okay. Uh, actually, I'm I'm always always used to using uh, the unit liter rather than gallon. I think uh, US and UK are using gallons, but me I'm used to you just you know. So anyway, one liter is one gallon is equivalent to four liters. So you just multi multiply by four, then you get one gallon. You know. So I think one point two five six dollar is one liter. If you're uh, talking about gallon, I think gallon is around four point. Uh, and depending, you know, now that we have uh, we, we have world crisis and we have the, because of the uh, you know the Ukraine war, so we're having really really high cost, you know, high price of the uh, the fuel the diesel fuel especially. Now, before, you know, a uh, couple of years ago, maybe um, uh, gasoline is more expensive than diesel. I think now diesel is more expensive than gasoline or petrol, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm used to using the liter. I, I love using liter. So I'm just giving you the, the Okay, just the, a disclaimer, this is not a true uh, information, could be, you know, the the prices of diesel fuel is, uh, you know, changing every now and then, uh, changing every, you know, every week. 
So could be okay, maybe the price now it could be uh, higher than this or it could be lower than this, depending on the situation. Okay, so we'll just use diesel here, and then the number of liters. Let's say we're gonna use we're gonna have we're gonna refill one hundred liters, or so. Yeah, so the amount would be $125.60, okay? If you're going to buy 100 liters, refill your, your uh, tank, 100 liters at $1.256 per liter. Okay, we also include, this is very important factor, the driver. The driver should be good, you know, well-trained uh, and experienced driver, especially when, when it comes to a long haul trip. So you should hire a driver and should train the driver. Train him about defensive driving, train him about the unit. He should be well, well versed, okay? Very familiar. And also uh, fuel consumption, the familiarity of the route. Uh, so you that's why you have to, you know, you have to train him, uh, give him a route familiarization training, awareness training. So that he would, you know, usually some companies are, you know, are having uh, master drivers. Okay, this is uh, below, in terms of rank, below than the driving start. Driving start are the one, you know, uh, doing uh, classroom training or on the job training. But the master drivers are the one guiding the the long haul driver. It comes to uh, route familiarization. They can also do a driving assessment, actually. Master drivers are, are experienced driver. A minimum of five years experience, 10 years, 15, 20 years. Experienced old guys, 50, 50 years old, 60, 60 years old guys, drivers. Okay. In the US, they have a female driver, as well as in the UK, they have female driver. But in some Asian countries, very seldom that you have female driver. Okay, most most of them are um, male drivers, especially in the Middle East. The Middle East, they don't hire uh, female drivers, but the female can drive now. In, in Saudi Arabia, they can. They are now now allowed to drive, but only cars, you know, light vehicles. But trucks, only males are driving trucks, heavy, especially heavy trucks. Articulated vehicles. Okay, let's just assume that our kilometer reading is, let's say, uh, fifty-five thousand kilometers from the origin, from the from the starting point. Maybe from your dispatch transport dispatch area, the reading will be fifty-five thousand. When you reach the depot, maybe from from west from west to east or from north to south, you know. So when you reach the, it becomes, the reading will become, so it should be recorded every time the driver start from the uh, point of origin and reach the destination. So this is destination actually. Okay. Odometer reading. Okay, I will just write here, odometer. Dometer reading, okay, 56. So the driver's responsibility is to ensure that he is recording the, the, the although the, the uh, odometer reading can be, you know, can be, he can be uh, recorded from the uh, GPS, okay, or the, what they call VTS, vehicle tracking system, computerized, you know, the the uh, odometer reading is automatically recorded, okay, in the headquarters. But also, also important that the drivers are also recording, you know, taking note of the uh, reading from the origin uh, and the destination, okay. So the total kilometer run is one thousand one hundred kilometers, okay. For long haul driver, that's short uh, trip, okay. I consider that. So here is the anal analysis. You have a kilometer per liter. So it means this unit is, you know, running for one liter is running 11. 
So depending, as I said, depending on the factors that I have explained to you, driving habits, you know, the engine power, vehicle maintenance, road condition, the terrain, the condition of tires, uh, or the the load that the the tractor is rigging, uh, 20 tons, 25 tons load, you know, okay, less load, meaning more uh, better economy, fuel economy. More load, especially if you overload the unit, then uh, worse economy, okay? And then the, the other one is liter per kilometer, okay, 0 0.09 uh, liters spent for every kilometers. And then, okay, so does it tell you something here? No. You have to have more records in order for you to analyze whether one unit is uh, doing better than the other, okay? That's why we're putting it in the report. And then the amount, how much you're spending per kilometer. Uh, in this case, 0.11, you know, 11 cents spent, uh, the amount, the money, every kilometer, okay? So that's why very important that you get the 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 kilometers you no know, reading or odometer reading from the starting point to the finish line. Okay. So I have done everything here. Then we're going to add this record, and then we go to the report. It's already here. See. So right now we cannot do any analysis. Okay. By the way, I have I have included here the kilometer and and the total kilometers run of all the units, the average amount per kilometer, and the amount that we're gonna put in the budget amount or the money per total kilometers, okay? Let's say, for example, you're going to plan 1,000 or rather 1 million 500 kilometers in one year. 1 million 500 kilometers in a year. So later on, we're gonna find out how much is the average amount per kilometer and then how much, because we're going to have this multiplied by the average amount like that. Then we'll find out later, okay? We don't have yet the average because we only have one record. And also the average, later we'll, we'll do this. Okay, I'm going, I'm going to explain that to you later. Then I'm going back to, I'm going, I'm going back to the data entry. Okay, new record, we're gonna put some new record, okay? Let's say we're gonna have the uh, record of the TT02. Uh, just click, click, click active. Then refilling that, let's just say uh, for TT02, say 1, 2, 23, January 2nd, 23. And again, okay, you know already the price per liter and then the fuel type is diesel. that one then the number of liters let's say in, in this case in this unit we have refilled 150 uh, liters do that would be 188 dollars and then we got another uh, driver here greg williams that's why it's easy if you have a drop down list right easy okay the odometer reading you cannot uh, implement drop down list here because it should be actual 62,000 uh, kilometers uh, reading. And then when you reach the destination, 62,900, that would be 900 uh, kilometers. Okay. Then add record. Okay. It's, it's there. New record again. Sorry. Okay, uh, the next one would be uh, it is 03. Okay, okay, active the unit. And then refilling date is 1323. 
Then price per per liter one point two five six. Diesel fuel type. The number of liters one hundred sixty liters. And the driver would be uh, Matt Smith. This guy. Okay. And odometer reading would be 74,500. Uh, and destination, odometer is between 5,300, for example. So the unit has run uh 800 kilometers total run okay then add this record again okay now we have three records here okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to post the uh the video and then and just just going to add all these records so that you we don't have to spend more time doing this simple task okay then you just wait until we most likely I'm going to uh, make it uh, maybe around 18 records, okay, or less, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this and then come back to you later. All right, welcome back. During when the uh, video was off, I was able to, you know, to encode more records. So let's go to the report. Okay, I have uh, okay, I have included up to 16 units of vehicle. Okay, we'll add this one, one more, add record. Let's see how many now. 17. Okay, we add one more new record. Let's take 18. 18. And then after this, we're gonna do the our analysis active. Then revealing date is, let's say, January 18, 2023. Then same amount of fuel per liter. And then, of course, diesel. And number of liters is, let's say, 180 liters refilling of the tank. And then we'll uh, select our driver. Driver would be this guy. Okay. And then the kilometer reading is 52,350. And the destination reading is 53,350. So that would be 1,000 kilometers total. You just add this record and go to the report. Now we have 18 records, okay? So what, what I have done is I have recorded, okay, the cost of the fuel. Okay, at the price of 1.26, okay, uh, 1.26 or 1.256 dollars or 1.26, the number of liters. So let's say for this record, I have uh, refilled around 2,991 liters of fuel diesel. Then this is the amount. The amount is around. $3,756. The this is the reading from origin and the kilometer reading from to destination. The total kilometer run. Total kilometer run is I have run 20,940 kilometers distance of trips for this record. Only 18 records anyway. Maybe you could have more records. Yeah, yeah, in 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 one month and you know, but this is just sample records that we have done. Okay, and then the kilometer, uh, the analysis is the kilometer per liter, the liter per kilometer and the amount per kilometer, okay? In order for us to find out how much budget we need for this example only, how much budget we need is we're going to get the average of the amount per kilometer, okay? Just get the average. Click tab and then get the average of this amount, right? Then enter. So this is our, okay. This is our amount. 
19 cents. Okay, average amount per kilometer. Therefore, if we are going to plan for 1,000, or rather 1,500,000 kilometers run, maybe one year uh, total kilometer run at, at an average amount of uh, 19 cents per kilometer, our consumption per kilometer, then the amount that we have to budget is $280,833. This is only for the 18 record. You know, a sample record that we have. How much is, okay, perhaps if we have more records, maybe this average amount per kilometer will change, okay? But uh, more or less, we already have the, uh, the average amount per kilometer because this would be the multiplier of the, the budget plan. Kilometer run that we're planning for the year is 1,500,000 kilometers run for our uh, tractor trailer, and therefore we're going to budget the amount of 280,833, okay? 200, for the fuel only, okay? Budget per kilometer, amount per kilometer, all right? For, uh, for the entire year. Okay, let's find out the uh, average liter per kilometer. So we'll find out the average for this one. Uh, average liter per kilometer, this one, average for this, enter. So our average liter per kilometer, meaning the consumption of liter per one kilometer is 15 cents, right? 15 cents. Put dollar on this, okay. So 15 cents, uh, sorry, this is uh, liter, 15, 15 liters rather. 15 liters, average liter, uh, 0.15 rather, 0.15 li average liter per kilometer, all right? What about the average kilometer per one liter? Okay, again, average, average kilometer, this one. We have more realistic, uh, you know, analysis. If we have more records, let's say records for the entire year, then we'll be able to have a, you know, uh, really a, uh, a good analysis, you know, close to real analysis, right? So our average kilometer per liter, in one liter, the average kilometer that you're going to run is seven kilometers, 7.09 kilometers, okay? Okay, just like the, just like the one that we did for, for the, uh, Okay, just like the one that we did for the work history, we can also use the um, the pivot table for our analysis in order for us to analyze in terms of the kilometers, in terms of the amount, the cost, in terms of the uh, the uh, total run kilometers, right? And who is spending more uh, more? consuming more you will find out you know you will be able to analyze who's who among this driver is consuming more uh diesel fuel okay you'll be able to analyze that in the pivot table okay who is spending more money uh, who is the 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 driver who's having bad habits in driving bad driving habits or adverse driving habits and also you can analyze, you know, which among these uh, fleet units is spending more uh, liters of fuel diesel or, or which one among these uh, units is spending more in terms of liters, number of liters, in terms of liters and in terms of uh, money, okay? So this is the good analysis if we have the good you know, you have uh, complete uh, records, fleet operation fuel, like, and we'll be able to analyze all the, uh, in terms of consumption, in terms of the, the unit that is, you know, consuming more fuel, or in terms of the drivers uh, consuming more in terms of lit number of liters, you'll be able to do that, okay? So this is it for today. 
uh, I have given you, you know, uh, information about the job in reform, and then the report on the uh, repair and maintenance data history, to, along with our analysis using the uh, pivot table, and then and then I have, uh, you know, I have explained to you the fuel economy. Okay, the, the analysis in terms of kilometer per liter, liter per kilometer, and the amount of money per kilometer, okay? And then in the report, the analysis that I have given to you, this one, then in order for you to be able to plan your budget for the following year, okay? So I have done all these topics, the, the work history and the fuel economy. Next time around, in our next presentation or next video, we're gonna be doing the data entry, data tracker, the annual MBPI, the motor vehicle periodic inspection tracker, the annual registration tracker, and the annual insurance premium. Okay, so we're gonna be doing that next video presentation. Right now, I would like to ask you to, if you like this video, please subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell so that you'll be uh, notified of the next video presentation. And I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Thank you very much.